Hi, my name is Michael James, and my friends call me the Grape Meister. I've been growing grapes and making wine for years, and I want to share my experiences with you. In this video, I am going to discuss the pre-bottling steps, testing for sulfite levels, the ideal sulfite level, sterilization steps, the siphoning step, and storage of your vintage wine. When you want a bottle of wine, you go to the store. You check out the labels, you pick out the vintage that you want, and you make the purchase. However, as a new winemaker, you now have to get that batch of wine from your vat or barrel into labeled bottles. There are several considerations that you have to address prior to the actual bottling process. Wine can spoil due to the fact that most batches of wine have natural bacteria and undesirable yeasts. Sulfide or sulfur dioxide can stop this deterioration of the wine quality. The trick is to be able to estimate the proper amount of sulfide necessary to preserve the wine without affecting the taste or aroma of the wine. The ideal amount is roughly 0.5 parts per million of molecular SO2 for reds and 0.8 parts per million molecular SO2 for whites. You have to test your wine prior to bottling for its pH level. The higher the pH level, the more sulfur dioxide that has to be added. The trick is to use the least amount of sulfur dioxide necessary to create a great wine. There are several sources available that can point you in the right direction as far as the proper sulfur dioxide amounts. The problem is that a truly sensitive palate can detect too much sulfur dioxide. Additionally, it destroys the bouquet of the wine and it will eliminate the ability of the taster to enjoy the wine's delicate flavors. I would recommend you purchase a pH meter for this step of the bottling process. Once you've determined the proper SO2 levels, it's time to actually do the bottling. Each bottle should be rinsed, cleaned, and sanitized, and then totally dried. While you're doing this, you should soak the new corks that you're going to use in water for at least an hour, and I actually recommend two. After that, you will need to rinse them in a warm water bath. After the bottles and corks are prepared, you're ready to transfer the wine into bottles. The process of transferring your wine from your secondary fermenter to prepared bottles is referred to as siphoning. If done properly, it will reduce the risk of transferring unwanted sediment, organisms, and air to your bottled wine. Fill the wine bottles to about one centimeter below the cork when they're in the upright position. After filling, be sure to leave the bottles in an upright condition for at least three days to allow for any surplus air to escape through the cork sides. After this, you should store the filled wine bottles on their sides, and that will seal the bottle from any air filtration, which is very bad for wine while it is aging. Store the bottles in a cool location that is moisture-free and away from any direct sunlight. Once you stack your bottles, it's advisable to leave them stationary and not move them unless absolutely necessary. Aging of the wine will improve its bouquet, and most experts agree that white wines need at least six months, while red wine should be allowed a year or more. Refer to the wine specific recipe that you use to produce your wine to obtain the ideal aging time frame. If you want more information, be sure to go to my website at www.totalwinesystem.com and sign up for my mini course. The best part is that it's free. That's right. It's free. Why wait? Do it now.